make a change in one place and you have to make changes in the other place to match them. They can make it, make it a much cleaner design when you can separate out the pieces. But if we designed the API right now with Audacity as we have right now and then locked it down, we would then be closed to making certain kinds of future changes because we'd have made certain decisions and it would make it hard to change those. So I wanted to look ahead at the kind of things we know we want to do. Like we know we want real time in this part of Audacity and we've been seeing some um, things from, from the end and, from, um, and we've seen changes in the GUI from Vaughan and we want those kind of things in Audacity. Um, so I was trying out um, really just proof of concepts of some of the things we know we want to do um, so that I can get the so that we can get the API sorted so that we then aren't churning in the API and saying, oh, this version is different from that version, you can't use this with that. Um, so So this is running as a plugin within Audacity. And so is that good? No, you just put your hands up there. No, no, no. So um, I'm using the library, a, a new graphics library called Antibrain, which um, normal the, no, the normal library we use for graphics, you can place the marker at, say, um, a certain number of pixels, a whole number of pixels. And um, if you want to place markers at, at fractional positions, you can't. Antigrain allows you to do it, and um, this allows our ruler to be stretchy. So, mm -hmm. as, as you, so instead of having to, instead of zooming in and out, you've got continuous zoom, and all the all the waveforms and so on change. You can't do that if you use the existing library, and it ties in, it connects in with this. Uh, um, the new version of WWX widgets has a thing called GDI Plus, which also has the fractional, but it's quite slow. The anti-grain one is fast and it enables us to draw this kind of speed. And it means that we could have the waveform um, scrolling past us rather than moving it in chunks each time each time you move to a new screen. <laughs> so um, the, the ruler is actually the piece which is, uh, has got the most thinking and work behind it. The top part of it uh, is the zooming, and you can see that new numbers appear, the new numbers fade in, and also the, um, the tick marks, the, um, the ruler marks, they, they fade in and grow from the bottom. So you can just keep zooming in. And you can see them coming up. Okay, that deserves a round. This is the zoom center. So that's the center around which you're zooming. Mm -hmm. So if I move it over here, and now I'm zooming over. <laughs> and the lower part of the ruler pans left and right. So you can pan and zoom all with, all with one control. Now, one of the things that that knocked out was that currently we have scrubbing actually in the ruler. And I thought, well, it's, you know, it's worthwhile having that. You know, it's worth, to get that, Losing the scrubbing is okay, but we've actually got scrubbing back in another way, which happened unexpectedly. And I'll show that in a moment. So, let's um, zoom out again. Okay. Just do your shortcuts. We will be able to. At the moment, I haven't got the shortcuts implemented. So, select some audio.
second selection. And it flips over to that one as well. Um, that one. And again, this was accidental. I can, I can overlap <laughs> some selections <laughs> like that. Um, and um, I, don't know if I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to go forward with the, with the overlapping selections. Because when I apply an effect, um, like this, do an app, um, uh, just do a part of that one. When I apply effect to multiple selection, I've actually applied it twice to the bit was, that was overlapped. I don't know, do I want to do that or not? Um, so um, it may, we'll talk about it. Adjust it and um, whilst you're playing, being able to zoom in on clicks, it makes a huge difference to being able to zoom in on clicks. And if you're doing crossfade, being able to very precisely get the boundaries of your crossfade. So um, I, I've reduced the number of buttons at the top, um, and, or, and like the pause, we don't need the stop button, we don't need the pause button, because you can just, you can just start it and stop it. Trying to reduce the number of controls and get more power at the same time. So I've I've got labels which are very like the labels we've used before, um, except that I've I've transferred the colour from the labels to the to the audio as well. Um, and the One of the label types I've got, a um, label type that gives me measurements. So um, you can see how many samples you have. I'll, I'll work on that and make this up, give you times and other, other kind of things. <coughs> Sorry, Joe, I can't read really that. Is that. That's the number of the labels, is the number of samples? Yeah, the, number, the labels are the number of samples, and that changes as, as you drag it, okay. which is going to be useful yeah. for, um, for education, for doing sort of like physics experiments where you want to see what is it. What is it? What is the length in time? What is the length in samples? Um, I've made some made some changes to the um, envelope track. Um, what I want to do because because I'm thinking real time, I'm thinking the way forward. Um, the um, the envelopes I want to be able to use them for automation as well. So at the moment they're a separate track, and um, I can do things like say, okay, I want that set. I want to smooth, make that section linear. <coughs> section here, section here, and those are all slightly curved up. And basically, instead of getting stuck with lots of control points which have all piled up in one particular place, with a bit more work on this, you'll, it will, um, you'll be reducing the number of control points. When you do something like that, there were effectively, no, there, there were effectively a number of control points there to make that way. You reduce the number of control points so you can move the whole section of the tools from there. Um, okay, so um, in making the GUI changes, we've I've known since 2003 that the one of the problems we have with the track panel is that we draw it ourselves, it's not the WX widgets control. And that means that we lose things which come from WX widgets. WX widgets does lots of things with sizing different elements. So what I've done is I've re-implemented some of the WX widgets pieces in 
our own code for sizing so that we can use own draw widgets. Um, I'll say that, I'll explain that again. That, um, in the, in the, using the toolkit that we normally use, when you have a dialogue, the positioning of the different elements on the dialogue is handled for us by WX widgets. Um, but when we get to the track panel, we have to go outside WX widgets because it doesn't have the flexibility and we lose that. And we've now got it back again. So I'm dividing the screen up into a uh, number of tracks, but I'm also dividing the bottom part vertically. And so we can mix and match our layouts with the track panel now in a way that we couldn't do before. Um, okay, and another consequence of that is that we can have the same, we can have the tracks separate like this, or we can also overlay them. So I can just move on to the next version, which shows superimposed tracks. So another thing that came out unexpectedly from having split the tracks up, it, actually was, it was actually a bug where I got two different screens combined at the same time, but I hadn't intended to see it at the same time. Um, and I ended up with two rulers on the same track. I'm oh, sorry, two rulers on the same display. So, um, <coughs> to scale view. So at the top we have Audacity, we have the Audacity Wave track at one view. And this is the view of the whole track. This is a this is a detailed view, and this is the long range view, and you can set the scale of each of them independently of each other. But it's the same data being shown in both. So if I go and I silence the section, if I go and silence that section there, you can see it being silent down here. And if I select, if I select several sections here, you see the same section being selected up there. So now when I zoom cuts around. I'm moving the two gangs together and I'm moving through the detailed view of the wave and the, and the long range view of the wave. So it's an acts as a navigation control. So one, one thing that I, I was sort of expecting here is, is uh, a, a, as you navigate on the top, uh, there should be some thing on the bottom that says what you're looking at. But there should be a, um, that I should have, yes, that um, that section there, we should have a little a little box here or some, some, some kind of graph. That'd be nice, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in fact, if you had that, you almost, I mean, one, there's some other editors that I've, I've seen and I have friends that you know, totally swear by it that uh, you 
know, they don't even need the, the waveform display on the bottom. They just need one bar of the whole piece with yep. with uh, a, a, a different cursor, cursor thing yeah. that tells where am I, and yeah. so that they can jump around. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would I'd do that. Yeah, and then if I, if and if you, you 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 could then make this whole part a lot lower height, and and it'd still be serving the same purpose. Yeah. so many, I had to have a way that you could navigate through them easily. One of the problems we have with the preferences dialog is that when you categorize things, you can very easily end up with a category that just has two items and another category that has 30 or 40 items in it. And you're constantly, when you're designing it, you're constantly thinking, well, should I amalgamate these categories just to make it look right to, to, to fit them together? So this actually solves that problem because I've Find a list control with a tab control. So you've got the tabs effectively down the down the left. So this top this top tab is tracks, and that covers all tracks, all track types. And then the next one <coughs> covers root of tracks. So if I make a change in here, it will make a change to um, to the root of track. So for example, let's say I change the change the white track. So the track one affects all tracks, that affects the root track, um, that affects wave tracks, um, the scroll tracks, um, the button track, which is this one up here, um, text one we haven't seen yet, bar chart track, that's the one down here, which isn't being used by anything, which is showing the bar chart. Um, the label tracks, and those are the different colours possible for the labels. So if you change that one, all those labels will change. Um, spectrum track. So there's, um, I think there's maybe 160 different parameters here, but you don't feel like you're overloaded with different parameters from doing that. Um, um, so, okay. So just uh, another couple of things. I've been talking with teachers about um, using computers in education, and through that I've been volunteering to an organization called Code Dojo teaching kids the program. And I've seen kids learning to program really fast using a language called Scratch, which is a drag and drop um, computer programming language. It's lovely and it's fantastic seeing, seeing 
with their numeracy skills, they can improve and they can do musical things with it as well. So a long-term goal is to combine Scratch and Audacity, <coughs> so have a scratch, the Scratch version of Audacity. Um, and uh, I've got beginnings of that here. So, so you're going to say, Martin, the long-term goal is to recruit, uh, sorry, the, uh, the long-term goal is to recruit and a whole uh, cadre of that. <laughs> Code Then contributing open source. Yes, I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, so and I put a, I put one of these multi scrolls on the left, so that um, all the different drag and drop things can be on the left, and you can then just take them from these and drag them to the right. And that's what the, the very simple scratch program would look like. But you can you can be putting the loop, <coughs> and then in there you can put drum beat one, drum beat two, drum beat three. Or um, it's basically it's just like a program. I've done is it's a slight evolution of Scratch. Um, in Scratch, you, you can drag these individual pieces and swap them together. I've combined it with a text editor, so I can go in and I can select a piece of text. So you can use the Scratch editor both as a Scratch drag and drop editor and as a normal text editor as well. Um, so it means that, that one of the objections I get from um, professional programmers is that um, Scratch is a toy bag. I'm going to change that to the scratch. It's going to be you can because it's got a normal text version of it. <coughs> you can make big programs with scratch, just not not just tiny ones. <coughs> yeah, it's, uh, yes, I, I made the point about the multi scrollers that you can get a tremendous amount of information into them. Um, this this is actually if in each century there are about um, seven hundred. multiple centuries here. So let's say then go for the two year two thousand fourteen, July it's the twelfth today, so and it's a Saturday. And the time is eleven o'clock? No, so ten ten thirty. So we don't have we don't have the half hours but and so each century has sort of seven hundred thousand entries to it. You can navigate through a huge quantity of data just by putting a few levels on. Um, so, where is this taking us? Um, we come back to the API. This is a plugin within Audacity um, that uh, it's been it's begun to flesh out the plugin architecture, how we can plug in not just effects, um, not just um, new, more powerful analysis plugins like the one ones that Martin has shown, but we can plug in individual track types and new GUI elements. Um, so it's taken us a step forward on that. What, I'm, what I think will be happening is that we will be folding more and more of these pieces into Audacity at a time. Um, so that we'll, probably the first thing we'll get into Audacity will be the flexible ruler. Um, and it gives us an architecture which we can build um, new versions of Audacity in, in a much, much safer way because we're not having to affect all the code that's in the one change is localized into just the plugin rather than something that ripples through and makes effects through that audacity. Thanks for listening. That's, that's what you're
when you get a standard container audacity, you will have much fewer preferences in OMT. But you can do a factory reset button. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want, uh, let's talk about exactly how, how, how we go about that. Um, because I think one of, the, one of the hard group decisions is what is the default configuration for audacity? Mm -hmm. um, and we do want it to be, we want it to be simple. We don't want it to be too simple. I am thinking particularly of the use in schools where the teacher will have will know what they what they want for the class, that they will know they're teaching physics, or they'll know they're teaching music, or they'll know they're teaching languages. Um, they will be prepared to spend a little bit of time with audacity, saying, I want the label, I want the label tracks because I'm teaching languages. Um, I I, um, I don't want a, um, a drum kit in audacity. <laughs> Whatever, whatever it is. So they can do a little bit of setting up, but they will want to be have their version so that they can reset them with their settings for their class. So it won't be, I'm not sure I want to have a reset to factory default, but I may want to have a reset to the train or teachers that will have them have multiple schemes. They could actually set up one as factory for the result they start with the Apple Box setting. Yeah. I think Sorry, I, I, I think that. if we do that we want to we want to do it through the kind of a magic handshake. And I'm also thinking of myself when I come to customize programs and I'm frustrated because the features I want aren't there. So I want the opposite. I want I want I want this I want this information button. I want when I click the information button, I want there to be like options up there that I can say factory default and I can say kitchen sink. And kitchen sink is ev absolutely everything because most of the time I will want kitchen sink. And I know that I'm a small percentage of users that most the vast majority of don't want to explore every single corner of audacity. They want to explore the pieces which they use. Yes, uh, somebody was saying um, you were before we came in um, you know, that you know, on, uh, you know, in cars it's like you can have uh, you know, a sports <coughs> setting. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so you can either have it in like you know, sort of, you know, got the kids, well I haven't got the kids. So so uh, you know, you know, the reason why you can't have um, you know, multiple Faults, you know, sort of like, you know, sort of which I mean, could, you know, could be uh, just like on configuration files, downloadable, or um, you know, or just you know, some built-in ones that you can add to. I mean, cause I'm, I'm sure we've, when you've got that amount of customization, uh, after I've played with it, I'm going to have like my preferred yes. setting, yes, right, like, and uh, and I'm going to want to save it somewhere <laughs> so, so that if I mess it up, I don't have to go to the whole setup again. Yeah, so. You also want to clear the portrait if you change to a different PC. Go to a different computer. Yeah. 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 Y
just, you know, our bundle is the kitchen sink, and then you just, just turn on what you want. You know, when you're talking about, about you used to being able to pull the set if they like, perhaps, perhaps you just, after, after it's introduced, you know, Steve's got his sports version when he has another kid, so he's just got his version, and he's got his version, and so on. And, and if those ported settings can be, can be sort of saved, they all, they all come back to the form, so you've got a selection of different people. And, you know, I was, I was around at Steve's house, and I thought, I, I really like the way he had this set up, so I just go on and see what Steve's setting before this is conditions or how you know, somebody else's set before this is. That's the big, you know, you sort of use a generator to get the basic sense out. Do you need to share with yourself? situations where you want to teach a, a certain lesson, like, you know, measuring the speed of sound, and, and you, you want to, like, turn off uh, almost everything uh, so that, you know, you have this <coughs> version of audacity for one day to support, you know, one activity. Yeah, if, if that was easy to do, then uh, that would be great. And you would have, it just make it a lot easier to find out. I don't think, I, I don't think there's much issue with